Hello everybody! Hello grade one twos! I hope you had a wonderful first week of school. I know some of you went back right away and others only went for a few hours and some of you are still at home but it's the start of a new school year and that's very exciting. Today is our last lesson in our series on Esther and at the end I have a special announcement so I hope you'll stay tuned. To start off our lesson today I have a question. I would like to know what is your favorite holiday? So I think my favorite holiday is Christmas, but yours might be Thanksgiving or Easter or your birthday. My next question is, what makes holidays so fun? There can be a lot of things that make holidays fun. Maybe you get to do special things or eat special food. You get to spend time with your family or maybe you even get presents. The Jewish people celebrate a holiday called Purim. On Purim, they celebrate how God worked through Queen Esther to save the Jewish people from Haman's wicked plan, just like we've been learning about. Today we'll learn about how the people rejoiced and praised God. God has special plans for us to worship him too. Let's see what we remember about the story of Esther. I'm going to tell you parts of the story we've heard so far, and if you think what I'm saying is not true, I want you to say no or you can stomp your feet. Um, and if I say something that's true, you can clap your hands and say yes. Are you ready? So on this first page, our story was about how Esther was a kangaroo. No, that's not right. Esther was a beautiful girl who became queen. On this page, Mordecai wouldn't give Haman a piggyback ride. No, silly. Mordecai wouldn't bow to Haman. All right, next page. On this page, Hathak, Esther's servant, rode a skateboard as he carried messages between Mordecai and Esther. No, silly. Mordecai told Esther about Haman's plan to kill the Jews. We got a big page on this one. Esther risked her life when she approached the king without being asked. That's right, that's true. And when the king held out his baseball cap, Esther knew everything would be okay. No, not a baseball cap. Do you remember what this is called? This is a scepter. For her special banquet, Esther took Haman and the king to McDonald's. No, silly. Esther told the king that Haman was planning to kill all the Jews. So this is our page for today. Let's see if I can move back a bit. There we go. And throughout the kingdom, this happy message spread. Queen Esther had saved us. Our enemy is dead. The Jewish people praised the Lord in happy celebration. Praise our Lord and praise the Queen who bravely saved our nation. And even now the Jewish people celebrate this way. The joyous feast of Purim is a happy holiday. So that was an overview, but let's hear about some of the details. When King Xerxes learned about Haman's wicked plan, he became furious. Since Esther was a Jew, Haman was accused of plotting to kill the queen. The king ordered that Haman be put to death immediately. But the king's decree that the Jewish people should die couldn't be taken back because it had been marked with the king's seal. Even the king himself couldn't change the decree. But King Xerxes could issue a new law, and that's just what he did. He told Mordecai to make a new law and stamp it with the king's seal. The new law said that the Jewish people could defend themselves against anyone who tried to hurt them. The law gave Jewish people throughout the kingdom of Persia permission to destroy their enemies. Messengers on horseback took the new law all over the land so everyone would know about it. And whenever the proclamation was read, God's people rejoiced because they knew they were saved. The Jewish people held a joyous holiday with feasting and celebration. They gave presents and food to the poor. They danced and sang because God had worked through brave Queen Esther to save them. Mordecai knew this was a special day his people should always remember. So he declared the special day a holiday to be celebrated every year. He told the people to remember the day they had been saved from their enemies. Every year since that time long, long ago, Jewish people have celebrated and praised God during the festival of Purim to remember the day that they were saved. And today, Purim is celebrated in the month of October. All right, let's do some quick questions. What did Mordecai's new law say? 
the new law said that the Jews could defend themselves. How did the Jewish people feel when they heard the new proclamation? They were happy and excited and relieved. What did they do to celebrate? They made that day a holiday. They had a feast. They gave gifts to the poor. The Jews worshipped God because they were saved. Mordecai wanted the Jewish people to remember that special day with the holiday called Purim. God has special plans for us to worship him too, so let's celebrate and worship God right now. Let's sing our song. You may remember it from a few weeks ago. It goes like this. God has plans that we'll see. Special plans for you and me. Jump up, clap three times, and slap your knees. Celebrate God's plans with me. Special plans for work and play and helping friends along the way. Jump up, clap three times, now shout hooray. Celebrate God's plans today. What do you think it means to worship God? To worship God means to tell him that we love him, to thank him, um, to say good things about him. How do we worship God? You may think of the normal ways that we worship God, like singing like we were just doing, praying and reading the Bible, learning about what he says, but we can worship God always just by remembering him when we do our daily things. A lot of you pray before you eat, and so that means eating is a part of your worship to God. If you remember God when you're at school, that's part of worshiping God when you're at school too. We can worship God everywhere and at any time. God likes to hear our words of thanks and praise. We can praise him at home, at church, at school, anywhere we go. We can worship God when we're alone or with our friends. So today we are going to do a special prayer. It is called a worship prayer. Um, and this is how we can pray and worship God. So we have some actions. Are you ready? Oh God, you made the starry sky. You made the mighty sea. You took care of your people, and you take care of me. Thank you, God, for the starry sky and for the mighty sea. Thank you for loving your people, and thank you for loving me. Amen. So for your craft this week, you have two choices. The first one is to make a little noise maker. Um, so the Jewish people, when they were celebrating Purim, they made a lot of noise because they were really happy. So if you find some rice or beans um, in a little cup, you could fill it up and seal it off and make a little shaker. I think we did that in the spring with one of our other crafts. So if you don't want to do that, you can do something called a Megillah. So every year during Purim, the Jewish people would read the Megillah, which told the story of Queen Esther, just like the story that we've been learning. So grab a piece of paper. This is my piece of paper. It can be a full sheet. This is just what I have right now. And you can, to make it easier if you want, you can um, glue or tape down like a straw or an old pencil or a disposable wooden chopstick, anything like that. Um, I don't have those with me, so I'm just going to do this next step without it. So once you've done that, if you want to do that, you don't have to, um, you're going to roll both sides in like a scroll, which I'm going to do on the table because I need a surface, but that's what it'll look like. So when you're done, it'll look like this. It'll look like a scroll, and this is what the Jewish people used um, used to read their stories from were scrolls like this. So you can use a string to tie it up, or if you don't have string or ribbon, you can also use a hair tie. And just pop it on, and you have a little scroll. Um, and if you're inside the scroll, and you open up, that's how they read it, um, you can draw the picture of Esther, you can write some words if you want. I will include um, these pictures for you. These are the pictures from our Today I Learned that you can glue inside. To remind you of the story of Esther if you want. And of course we have our Today I Learned. It's our last week for our memory verse. Um, our story today came from Esther chapter 8 verse 17 and chapter 9 verses 18 to 23. Um, and our verse has been the one from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. We'll be sure to include that for you.
And now for a special announcement. I hinted at it last week. We are having our back to school adventure on September 27th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We will be sending the Zoom link to your grown-ups, but it's the normal church Zoom number, so they should know it already too. Um, and this is to replace the event that we normally have at church to celebrate the beginning of the school year. Um, and for some of you, that means we are celebrating the time that you spent in our Sunday school class because you are moving up to grade three or grade four and you will be moving to a different class. And it also means that we will be having some new friends join us for Miss Kathy's class. So that will be starting in October. We will be going to our new classes if you have one. So the big news is that there is a prize for whoever brings the most visitors. So you can start telling your friends at school, asking if they want to come join. There will be a story and crafts and games. It will be a lot of fun. So that will be at the end of the month. We're already preparing, so we're hoping it will be a good time. All right, everyone, that's it for this week. We will talk to you soon. Bye.